I went out to feed our chickens this morning. These are all chickens we raised from eggs in the incubator, and they've been producing quite a few of these farm fresh eggs. We love having chickens. But when I went out this morning, I found this. An animal had gotten in and killed one of our chickens that produces an egg every day. So that's a big loss to our little chicken flock. And it has a smell of skunk. I am certain that a skunk came in and killed one of our chickens. We definitely have to take care of this skunk before he kills all our other chickens and steals eggs. So we're going to avenge this chicken's death by setting up a trap and uh, catching that skunk. Here's the scissor deadfall trap that I came up with to kill our skunk. Now you're going to want to know how to build this style trap because it's so easy to construct. All you need is a tool for cutting wood such as a saw or knife and some rope. Here I carry paracord with me in my pack and this amount of paracord will make dozens and dozens of these traps. And you can scale this up to kill larger animals or scale it down to kill smaller animals such as rabbits, squirrels, rats. I built this just the right size to kill our skunk. Now you might think that this kill log here, the deadfall, is a little small for killing a skunk. It's pretty light. Usually when you build deadfalls you use great big logs that come down and smash the animal. But what's so great about this trap is you're using mechanical advantage of the lever. As you can see, the base station is here at the bottom of the scissor. That's the fulcrum where the greatest amount of force is applied. So when the animal comes through and the scissor comes down, the greatest amount of force is right here. Now the bottom part of the scissor is not as important on length. As long as it's secured to the ground, it doesn't really matter. The key is the top scissor. Now you can build this top scissor way longer. That will add more force. So the more killing power you want, the longer this top scissor will be. Now I'm going to not have a 10 foot long top uh, scissor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some weight. Here I have a piece of driftwood that has a hole in it and it will sit right on the end of the scissor and just add a ton of killing power to this trap. And I also have two stabilizing sticks here. You don't need those but that's just to make sure that this uh, scissor doesn't go sideways. It comes straight down and comes down on the animal. Now here is the bait station. It's kind of hard to see so I'll do a close up of showing you how it works. But the animal comes through here like this to get the bait uh, and the, as you can see its head is right there at the bottom of that scissor. And as it takes the bait there, it comes down and all that force is right on its neck or on its body. Here's what the bait station looks like on our scissor deadfall trap. You have the main deadfall log that goes up and down and is tied together here with a figure eight. Obviously you want the animal's head or body to be right here at this point when the trap is set so that when it comes down it will crush them. The way we do that is I have two Y sticks that are shoved into the ground to contain this log. It keeps that log from going side to side and it also directs the animal to the kill point where we want them to be. Behind this I set up a bait station. It can be anything from branches and uh, sticks shoved in the ground to rocks. Anything to keep the animal from entering the trap on the side and we'll put something on the top here. They have to enter through the trap. I also have a little cross piece on two of these sticks. That will hold our toggle and make our trigger system. Our toggle trigger system simply consists of a rope tied around our main deadfall log and a stick tied to the end of that. You'll notice a little groove on the top of the stick. The way you set this is you pull your deadfall log all the way up, put your little toggle string right through that groove resting on top, and then it comes down and the toggle wraps around that little cross piece. And mechanical advantage on that is it doesn't take much force at all to hold this uh, kill log in place. Then you take your little trigger stick, one ends on the ground here and one ends on the back of our little toggle system. You got to get a good balance so it's held just right. We're going to put some bait on that trigger stick so when the animal comes through to get the bait, it will pull that trigger stick, release the toggle and that deadfall will come down just like this. And that's held into place. That will be perfect and it will kill the animal very quickly. Here's one of the chickens that the skunks killed. They've been feasting on it and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the head and use that on the trigger system as the bait. So I'm just going to chop off that chicken head, put that right there on the trigger system and uh, that skunk's going to die for killing my chickens. Let's go set up the trail cameras and see if it works tonight. This scissor deadfall trap works so great. This is actually the second night in a row that I've caught a skunk in this trap as they're trying to enter my chicken coop. The deadfall comes right down on their head or neck as they try to take the bait and you got the animal. Great to know in a survival situation because you can skill this up and catch animals a lot larger than a skunk. But it works great for medium sized animals too. People really don't like that I put trapping videos on YouTube. Every day I get so much hate mail. 
but these are predators coming into my chicken coop and I feel completely justified in killing these animals. I do have a rule that I eat what I kill and uh, I've always wondered what skunk tastes like. So in the next video, I'm actually gonna cook one of the two skunks that I've killed. I hear it's terrible. I hear the meat tastes just like a skunk spray, but we're gonna find out for ourselves. So in the next video, stay tuned because we're gonna cook and eat skunk.